starting to deal with this music. Sorry, just hold you for a second because it's no worries. Okay, in lieu of an opening statement, we'll take a couple of questions first for uh, Coach Chance. <laughs> first to our right. James or players? Coach. Okay. Coach, uh, it just seemed like what they were doing defensively kind of knocked you off axis a little bit. What did you see from them, especially in the first half, to kind of get them going defensively and limit you all offensively? Yeah, that was the story of the start of the game. Uh, us turning the ball over way too much. You know, you can talk to your blue in the face about that, but at the end of the day, you got to give credit to Michigan State. And uh, they didn't do anything different than we anticipated or that we prepared for. They just did what they do at a high level. And they got in those gaps and they got guards, they got really strong hands. And, you know, they're very ball hawkish when, when you try to drive it in there. And, and I thought that really hurt us early. You know, our, our half court defense, our, our get back, you know, giving from O to D was, was good. We worked on it a ton because of our respect of how fast they play. But we put ourselves in some tough spots um, with our turnovers. And then, you know, in, in, Gave them credit, but at the same time, we, we just didn't move the ball as well as we wanted to going into the game, and then we got off to a really, really poor start. Front row. Coach, uh, both teams turned it over quite a bit, 16 uh, and 15 respectively, but three-point shooting, Spartans 10 of 23, you guys 6 of 27. That, that appears to be the difference. Would you agree? I mean, it uh, didn't help. Uh, we've won plenty of games where we didn't shoot it uh, you know, very well. Uh, they, they played really well. I thought Michigan State played really well. They were very well prepared. Uh, we had a hard time um, you know, keeping their guards in front of us. They were getting downhill on us for themselves and creating for others. And we actually ended up playing you know, quite a bit of uh, variations of different zones, uh, especially in the second half. But it didn't slow them down that much. And then you know, we shot way more threes, obviously, in the second half, trying to mount a comeback um, you know, more than anything. Okay, we'll take questions now for Cameron and Josh. Second row. Uh, for Josh, I mean, what did you see from them defensively that you felt like was so effective and, and kind of limiting you all offensively? Uh, yeah, just following what uh, Coach Jan said, they were heavy in the gaps, you know, strong hands, scraping at the ball. And, you know, uh, we took uh, – we didn't really do that good of a job of ourselves, you know, moving the ball and moving off the ball as well. So. Um, we could have done better, but yeah, they a lot of great credit to them for how they play defense. Again, to our right. Uh, back to Josh. I mean, made such an impact as a true freshman in a very difficult league. How do you kind of assess how you were able to adjust to this level in year one and have the kind of season that you did? Uh, it all started in the summer. You know, um, we were battling at each other in the summer, you know, going at it each and every day, practicing hard. And, you know, there were frustrating times for not just myself, but all of us, um, you know, having high, high expectations and, you know, wanting to play. And so uh, Coach installed that in us, you know, getting on us every day and holding us accountable. So, the, um, you know, once you go into that type of environment every day, it's kind of hard to not be successful from your teammates. Middle of the room. Uh, for all you. Um, Tom Izzo's had a lot of success in this tournament, particularly, you know, in the first round, 20 and five. I just wonder, you know, when you're going up against a team like that, you know, what is it like going against him? And I guess you, you have to be ultra prepared. For me personally, um, you know, I talked about it prior to the game of the respect level that I had for him as a coach and how he's run his program from afar. I don't know him like that personally. I've never been to his practices or games. But um, when you're in this mode of preparing, you know, it doesn't really matter who the coach is. And I mean that with all due respect. Um, we're just trying to put our players in position to be successful. And uh, we didn't talk about, you know, any of uh, his records uh, in terms of first round or tournament success. I think our players had the same type of respect for their program, but at the same time, you know, it wasn't like we were, um, you know, trying to go in the game and to be thinking about things of that nature. 
Any other questions for Cameron or Josh? Second row. Cam, the expectations seems like have changed the last few years. I mean, you guys are disappointed finishing in the in the first round of the NCAA tournament. I mean, what's your thoughts on you know, how far this program has come and the direction of things now moving forward? Um, just uh, the direction that is going in. Uh, I'm very proud for our state and of Coach uh, Coach, uh, Coach Jans, and I just see the program in the future uh, just continue to excel. Even after all of us are gone, I just feel like it's going to go to another level. Okay, Cameron, Josh, you guys head back to the locker room. Thanks. Good job. Congratulations on a great year. Okay, questions for Coach. To our right. Chris, I guess for you know, you guys last game with DJ, Tolu, some of those veterans, I guess what did, what do they kinda of mean to you and how tough is it, you know, to have to walk away, you know, on, on this note? Yeah, you know, these endings are, are tough. You know, you don't prepare for walking to those locker rooms and you know how you're gonna handle it because you think you're gonna win the game. Certainly, you're prepared for what you're going to say before the game, you know, et cetera, trying to have the message right leading up to these opportunities. But, um, you know, we talked in the locker room about it, and, and I thanked them for, um, you know, the, the guys that have been here since we arrived as a staff. I just thanked them for uh, believing in us and having some blind faith in us when they didn't have to. There were people pulling them in all sorts of directions, and I'm sure part of it was, you know, they loved the university and, and uh, they were there for a number of different reasons. And we tried to sell them a vision on what, you know, we thought we could do uh, as a staff at Mississippi State. And I, I just really talked about that with them as a group of, uh, I'm going to appreciate them, you know, forever um, for, for sticking with us. And I also told them that, you know, they might not feel it right now, but, um, you know, I promise you they've, they've had a lot of growth. Um, on the floor and, and probably more off the floor and you know that we feel good about equipping these guys uh, when they're through with their eligibility and preparing you know for the next uh, part of their career the next part of their life for that matter back of the room Chris just to follow up on that as you guys you know continue to build this thing how much do you feel like this group now leaving you're going to be able to look back and say how, how much I guess maybe they helped establish your culture and, and, and help move things forward for the for this next group of guys yeah, you can't go backwards, obviously, and play the what if game, but that's kind of what I told him. You know, uh, I'm not sure, I didn't say this to him, but I'm not sure where we'd be. You know, we'd had to have signed a lot of more players than we did. Um, you wouldn't have the same, you know, type of dudes in our locker room, maybe. Um, but we'll see. You know, who knows uh, what the future holds. Obviously, you know, we went from an 11 seed to an 8 seed, and we talked about that in the locker room as well. And, you know, this this group of men that have been here, um, you know, they're going to be remembered. You know, they've done, done a lot of things in the last two years that this program hasn't um, for quite some time with the quality of wins and the tournament appearances. And certainly we're, we're crushed um, yet we're not advancing. And, and you know, that was the plan. We thought we could win multiple games with the group that we had. That was our goal all year long from when we got together in June and refocused in, in the fall. And that was our ultimate goal. And uh, it doesn't feel great not to achieve it. But, um, you know, th these kids will be remembered for sure. To our right, Coach. And speaking on those guys, I mean, you're losing some, some key pieces to this team. Still got some decisions to make on some guys, too, and bring about bringing back Josh. What's kind of the biggest point of emphasis you think moving into next year to get back to this point? Man, I, I really haven't gone there yet. Uh, I've been super focused on uh, this team, and certainly recruiting never ends. But um, you know, I've been super focused on trying to get our team in the best position possible to to win these meaningful games. And uh, I'm sure as we get through with our obligations and we get back to the hotel, and staff will be raring to go with. Uh, you know, getting me more uh, on the phone than, than we have and, and trying to figure out, you know, uh, where we go from here. But um, we're going to want, you know, quality people. We're going to want, you know, obviously good players. And um, like you said, I mean, we're going to try to try to be better uh, in, in better position next year than we are uh, right now. Last question to our right. 
Coach, speaking on those veterans, you know, with DJ specifically, we saw him, you know, that Bama game, he tried to play through an injury, obviously wasn't 100% today and, and leading up to this game, I guess. What, what kind of impression does that give you of him, you know, the, the way he tried to play through, um, you know, some of the difficulties this past month or so? Yeah, he got hurt in the Auburn game and uh, none of us knew it. You know, he kept playing and then um, he hasn't practiced fully since uh, the SEC tournament. He's been hobbled and just really rehabbing as much as he can. And uh, he said he was available. The trainer said he was available. And anyone that watches this, you know, throughout the season knew that he wasn't himself. And, you know, that, that was tough uh, that way. Um, but it says a lot about him. You know, he, um, he's grown so much. And I love where he's at mentally. Um, he, you know, he's got a bright future. And, um, you know, for him to do that on, on more than one occasion speaks volumes to, you know, who he is as a person and, and who he, what kind of teammate he is and uh, what he believes in. Okay, thanks, Coach. Thank you.